and thank you everybody for coming. So I'm going to present our work on reciprocity of social networks with capacity constraints. This is joint work with Jili Zhang from University of Minnesota and uh, Don Talsey from Univers uh, of, U uh, of UMass Amherst. So uh, there are many social networks that are actually directed, for example, Twitter and Google+. Google+. So on Twitter, Alice might follow Bob, but Bob does not necessarily follow us back. So if, if he does, then uh, these two edges actually form a pair of recipro uh, reciprocated links. So reciprocity is precisely the um, metric that measures the fraction of reciprocal edges. So in this simple example here, um, the green edges form a pair of reciprocated, reciprocated uh, edges. And uh, there's a black edge from, uh, from, um, from Bob to um, Charlie. So um, reciprocity is by definition two thirds. So reciprocity is, is a very important characteristic of directed graphs. And it in, can be interpreted as the net, some kind of network organizational principle. For example, it can be used to uh, classify networks into reciprocal networks and anti-reciprocal networks. And non-trivial values of reciprocity has been observed in many social net, in many real networks. For example, for, uh, for Google Plus in, in, in 2012, it has uh, reciprocity uh, 34%, and for Swedish Wikipedia, uh, it has it, uh, it's 21%, and Spanish Wikipedia, uh, it's um, 15%. So the question is, so how should we interpret these numbers? Um, Mm, what the traditional answer is to compare it with the, some some kind of threshold. Uh, a very commonly used um, some very commonly used models to compare it with with the expected value in some random null model. And uh, if it's larger than the expected value, then we say the network is reciprocal. And otherwise, we say it's uh, anti-reciprocal. Um, for this, um, uh, in this null models, usually um, the degree sequence is usually preserved. Um, so for the examples we have here, um, the uh, expected value in the random null model is uh, almost to zero. So um, these networks are classified as reciprocal. Um, but given that it might be it is actually informative to compare with the empirical value with the um, maximum, reciproc re maximum achievable reciprocity subject to some structural constraints. So if we call that um, the maximum uh, under this constraints of the structural maximum, then we see that for these three examples uh, we have here, the um, maximum is for Google Plus is about 47%, and for the Swedish Wikipedia and Sp uh, Spanish Wikipedia, they are 20, 28% uh, and 36% respectively. Um, yeah, and if we, if we look at the ratio, we can see that um, actually Google Plus and Swedish Wikipedia sh uh, has ab about achieves a about the same percent, uh, approximately the same uh, amount of, uh, the same percentage of the uh, structural maximum, uh, while the Spanish, uh, Spanish Wikipedia behaves very differently. Um, so uh, these examples show that it's instructive to um, look at the maximum reciprocity, and so we need to solve the uh, reciprocity maximization problem. Here's an outline of this talk. Uh, I've just finished the introduction, then I'm going to give um, the problem formulation followed by a bound and its hardness analysis. Then we are going to look at some empirical study and followed by a heuristic um, to optimize, to solve this heuristic to solve this problem. Then I will conclude this talk with a summary and a, a brief discussion on future work. So I sort of alluded to the structural constraints in the introduction. So the specific con structural constraints we're going to look at here is the degree by degree sequence. So for each, to each uh, directed graph, we can associate to it. We can associate uh, um, as two sequences uh, of non-negative integers, namely the out-degree sequence and the in-degree sequence. So here, um, d1 plus is like the out-degree of the of node one, and d1 minus is the in-degree of node one. Um, but so, but conversely, given any, uh, it, uh, it's not true that any uh, non-negative integer, any sequence of non-negative integers, integers can be realized by a graph. If it is indeed the case, with them, we say that sequence, that sequence is um, graphical. Um, and it can be tested using the uh, fuchsian cheng Eskin theorem in quadra quadratic time. Um, so so um, other than the, 
that the degree is a very important, the fact that the degree is a very important uh, stru structured property of the uh, directed network, it actually can be, um, the degree act uh, actually omits the interpretation as a proxy of for the capacity constraints. For example, in a social network where the directed link uh, edge goes from the follower to the followee, the in degree of a node reflects the fame and uh, popularity of the node, and the out degree um, reflects the budget of attention of the, na of, of the node, namely, say, um, how, how much time he could spend on the net social network. Uh, in another context, like the file sharing network, where the edge goes from the source to the downloader, the in degree can reflect the bandwidth of the node and uh, uh, the out degree, um, the resource at the source node. So um, preserving this degree sequence uh, can honors the capacity constraints to some extent. Um, so the question we ask is, uh, what's the maximum achievable reciprocity subject to these capacity constraints? Uh, formally, we are given a graphic by, degree sequ by sequence, d plus and d minus. We would like to find the graph that uh, has the maximum reciprocity at, and at the same time has d plus and d minus as its degree by sequence. Note that he, um, since the degree sequence is fixed, is fixed and so we are maximizing reciprocity is equivalent to maximizing the number, number of reciprocal edges. Now we're going to look at a very simple upper bound here. Uh, the theorem here says that the maximum number of reciprocal edges rho is upper bounded by uh, the sum over nodes of the mean, of the minimum of the in, out degree and the in degree. The proof is almost trivial. If you look at the number of re reciprocated edges leaving node i, um, it's upper bounded by the um, in degree, minimum of the in degree and out degree. So for the, this node i here, uh, no matter what you do, the, max, the best you can do is um, get two pairs out of the in degree and out degree. Um, but it turns out that this, uh, it is NP complete to determine whether this innocent looking upper bound is achievable. And the proof is by reduction from the three color tomography problem. Uh, we actually have some, um, uh, also have some um, necessary conditions and sufficient, sufficient conditions for the achievability of this upper bound, but I'm not going to talk about that, uh, talk about them in this talk here. So um, the next, next we're going to look at uh, how, the, how close we are to the upper bound in reality. So here we, um, I've shown, uh, there's an, uh, here I'm, I'm showing a, a scatter plot of the empirical reciprocity against the upper bound for a variety of net, real, uh, real networks. So we included the major directed social networks and for the purpose of comparison, um, some, some other directed networks of uh, diff other categories other categories. Uh, most of these data sets are from the uh, previous paper, from previous literature, so I'm not going to talk about those uh, data sets. Um, what we can see here is that the reciprocity varies widely. Uh, at the bottom, there's the P2P network in Nutana, which has reciprocity zero, and in the top right corner, um, there's a, the social network slash dot, which has a reciprocity of almost 90, well, I think it's actually above 90%. And in general, uh, reciprocity is very high for social networks and the um, Wikipedia networks, and it's very low for the P2P network and so software call networks. Well, for the software, net well, software call networks, it's, this is not very surprising because uh, usually software is uh, software design designed to work in a hierarchical way, and we don't expect them to call the functions to call each other very frequently. Um, so, uh, in general, the um, reciprocity. The empirical reciprocity is not very far away from the upper bound. Indeed, if you look at the ratio between the recipro empirical reciprocity and the upper bound, uh, it has a very well. It has much less has much less variability, and it's the ratio is actually much, uh, uh, larger than 50 percent for m most of the networks we look at here. Uh, we, is, um, especially for those categories from like the communication network and, and the Amazon co-purchasing network, social networks, uh, web network, and its sub, sub network and the, Wiki, the Wikipedia networks, uh, with only three exceptions, and like the Stack Overflow question and answer network, the WikiVote network, and the Spanish Wikipedia. Um, so for the Stack, the Stack Overflow network, although we have classified it as a social network here, it is different from the traditional social network. Um, uh, so it, it, so it actually, uh, so um, we expect that the network to reflect the 
now there's there's some some maybe some kind of weak hierarchical structure to reflect the ex expertise of the um, users in this network. And but what's more interesting here is the Spanish Wikipedia. It's so it's an outlier um, because we the um, uh, April, April Riley, we would expect all the Wikipedias to behave, behave almost uh, the same, um, but um, and, but it turns out the Spanish Wikipedia uh, behaves very different from from from, their, from its peers. So this uh, and suggests that there might be something interesting going on in this network, and, and that invites uh, further study. Um, so from from this, uh, by looking at the ratio, we can s sort of conclude that. In, the, in, the, those, in those networks, there's a strong tendency um, to re, for the nodes to re reciprocate and modulate the uh, degree constraints. To, um, in particular, for the Google Plus network, the empirical reciprocity is in 34%, as we have seen before, and the upper bound is 75, uh, 74%, and the ratio is uh, 73%. And in another example, the Swedish Wikipedia, um, so if the empirical reciprocity is 21%, and the upper bound is 28%, and it actually achieves a 75% of the maximum um, achievable reciprocity. So uh, in addition, we also observed a very strong linear relationship between the uh, empirical reciprocity and the upper bound. Here, um, this is the scatter plot that we have, um, scatter plot that we have uh, seen before. Um, and here, I'm superimposing the uh, regression line uh, for networks from the category of uh, communication networks, co-purchasing, uh, social, web, and Wikipedia networks. Um, we can see that this, the, um, the data points are sort of concentrated uh, around this uh, regression line. Uh, but if, if we look at the non-normalized uh, reciprocal num number of reciprocated edges in the log-log scale, um, we can see that this kind of, sort of linear relationship is even stronger. Um, and this time, I, uh, the regression line here includes actually included the uh, biological networks. So this uh, surprising, sort of surprising, uh, strong linear relationships that suggest that there might be some cross-domain mechanism at work, although we don't have an answer to that. It's kind of intriguing. So we uh, we hope we um, will have a chance to explore um, an explanation for for this um, um, observation. So um, the upper bound might actually might be loose, although it's pretty, uh, the, the, although we have seen that the empirical reciprocity is pretty close to the upper bound. So can we get a better I idea about the maximum reciprocity achievable? The, uh, the approach we take is to look lower bound the um, a maximum achievable um, reciprocity by looking at some sub suboptimal motifs. Uh, the particular type of suboptimal motif we're going to look at the so-called three path, which um, is uh, elementary three, length three path of uh, unreciprocal, uh, unreciprocated uh, edges, and it can be classified uh, into four types according to the connections between the, uh, the initial node and the last node. And uh, the first of three types of those uh, sub um, paths are actually suboptimal and can be rewired to in increase reciprocity. So the heuristic here is to greatly rewire all suboptimal three, um, three paths. And, um, so I'm um, just to show an example um, for the type type two um, suboptimal three path. So we can cut the edges in, in, um, marked by the red crosses and rewire them into the green edges to increase reciprocity. By doing, um, we can do the same similar things for the other two types of suboptimal three paths. By doing so, we actually automatically uh, removed many others large larger scale uh, suboptimal structures as well. So how does um, this, perform, this uh, heuristic performing real, uh, in, uh, in reality. Um, in, in, so here, this is the scatter plot we have seen before. By applying the heuristic, we can actually bring the um, reciprocity very close to the upper bound, as, as you can see here. Um, so but this, this actually, actually shows that the upper bound is a pretty good summary of the fundamental limits imposed by the degree by sequence. And the uh, suboptimal three path that we have seen is uh, the ma major contributor for the loss of re reciprocity in, re in real networks. Now here's uh, now I'm, uh, here's the summaries. We look at the uh, reciprocity on 
maximization problem under degree constraints. Theoretically, we form formulated the maximum reciprocity problem and look at an upper bound and necessary and sufficient conditions for its achievability. We showed its, mm, the, the NP hardness of this problem, and we look at the suboptimal motifs and uh, provided the local, uh, greedy local search algorithm. Um, empirically, if we showed that for a wide range of real networks, uh, um, the reciprocity is very close to the upper bound, and the three paths that account for the most loss in reciprocity, and there's a strong linear relationship between um, the empirical reciprocity and the upper bound. So, for few, so this shows that it's very useful to study the constraints imposed by one network characteristic uh, on another. Um, so for the future work, uh, we would like to design an, an approximation algorithm with performance guarantee for the maximum reciprocity problem. And we would like to explore the cause for the uh, strong linear relationship. And uh, we would like to extend the study to the interdependence between other important network characteristics. Uh, with this, I uh, would like to stop, and I'm happy to take questions. Thanks. All right. Um, any questions? OK, so um, my question is whether you can, in like one minute, talk a little bit about the necessary and sufficient condition that you mentioned about the upper bound. Uh, OK. So the necessary condition is actually sort of trivial. Um, so we have this, uh, um, this is the uh, R degree and this is the N degree. So we look at the component-wise mean and the component-wise maximum of the degree sequences. So the necessary condition is that and these two sequences must be graphical limbs on their own. Um, and for the uh, sufficient condition, uh, it's uh, here. Um, so um, it's sort of related to the graph, packing of graph, two graphical um, uh, degree sequence. And uh, so but we can, if we put a bound on the maximum degree, then we can sort of ensure that these two de degree sequences are packed together. So. All right. Yeah, that, that's good. Yeah. OK. Um, any other questions? If not, let's thank this speaker and all those in this session, because this concludes our session.